Ultimate Games Master. For Games Masters, welcome to the complete toolkit of everything, including campaign and world builder, encounters, looting, handouts, questions, sound, and lighting. Everything is home brewable with online or offline play. Control the adventure, control it all, no matter where you are. For players, everything in one place for all your character needs. Store notes, quests, access your available compendiums, roll dice, interact with other players as well as the Games Master and so much more. For spectators and streamers, connect your device to the game for an overview of what is happening in real time. Is that player almost dead? Has the druid wild shaped? Now you know exactly what is happening as well. And finally, take your streams to the next level by incorporating real-time character and campaign data into your live stream, all controlled from the comfort of your control panel. The UGM will be available on more devices than you can shake a stick at. Don't miss out. Set your reminders as the Ultimate Games Master is kickstarting on July 27th. Visit theultimategamesmaster.com. Any platform, any game, anywhere. Would you like to? No more. The Ultimate Games Master. And hello and welcome. This is Band of Badges. Uh, I am Dave. Here's some other people. And <laughs> it's gone completely. <laughs> Kaput already. <laughs> Everything is back working in slow motion as the screen comes up on, on I don't know what my computer is doing. It's going really slow. But anyway, hello, let's try again. I'm Dave, I'm your host for this evening. This is Band of Badgers and joining us on our Q&A guest uh, this session is Justin Heesman. Now Justin, you've been here before. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Really good, I think. Good. Oh, it's all good, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's good. It's, we've had a few technical hitches behind behind the, the scenes in the old virtual green room, but everything seems to be working. So we are we are good to go. And um, so what we're gonna be doing is, let's skip that, let's go back to the introduction. So Justin is the lead developer of the Ultimate Games Master, which is a fantastic piece of software. It's, it's out there, this is something to rival D&D Beyond. Now if you've ever used D&D Beyond, this is better. It's <laughs> simple, okay? So get out there and support it. This will leave it in the dust, believe me. And joining me, as always, as the co-host is Steve. How are you doing, Steve? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm good. Okay, so <laughs> if you have any questions at any time, feel free to put it into the live chat. Steve will remind you every now and then that we are open to questions. But if, if you have questions for Justin, do just ask. And we will do our very best to spot them and ask them. But that's Steve's job, not mine. I'm doing everything else. Steve just has to do the question. I say just has, to, he has to do a lot more than just ask the questions, but he has to keep an eye on it at least. So, whew, now for that, I got really hot in here. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, us as Banded Badgers, we support writers, artists, designers, and creators across all of our shows. And you can find all of our content on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash band of badgers. It's very, very simple. All you gotta do is go there and subscribe. We're a very small channel, but anything you can do to help us out is appreciated. And if you would like to support us in return, you can in all the usual places. We have Twitch subs, Patreons, merchant, not Patreons, we have Patreon, uh, merchandise, even an Amazon wish list. So with all of that now out of the way, I can, I've got, I'll show you in a minute. I've got screens going all over the place. We are gonna do something different. So Justin has been here before. And if you've watched our previous videos, do and if, if you haven't watched our previous videos do go check them out if you have seen them you'll probably be up to where we are right now so over the past few episodes we've been building a campaign using the ultimate games master as as the root the foundation of all this software and today we get to reap the benefits so i've got my kindle you can play it on a bloody kindle yes you can so i'm gonna i'm gonna use a kindle to play the game. So me and Steve are both gonna be uh, players. Justin is gonna be the DM. He's gonna be using his software and we are gonna be doing all bits and pieces to see how this actually works. And we're gonna share our screens so you can see what we're doing. We're gonna minimize our heads and we're gonna show you what we're doing so you can get an idea of how this software works. So Justin, 
we mentioned that this is a Kickstarter. We are down into the last however many hours. And as one of the benefits of back in the Kickstarter is you get a discount to this subscription. Is that right? That is right. Yes, yeah, there we that go. is very right. Cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a good good discount. Um, I say for a product that's already already working and already out there. So yeah, grab it while uh, grab while, it while, while it's can. there. Okay. So my, my, I just warned my reception is terrible. I don't know why. Is yours? Uh, no, my my signal and reception is good. Ah, oh, my my reception was just showing a red red square. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't normally <laughs> just today. Just to, just when we need it most. <laughs> it's, it's probably Steve. We can see Steve doing something with electronics. He's probably just hacked into the system, really. So, uh, my uh, computer put working, so restart. See, as I said that, my uh, my now I think it's connected from the server. <laughs> I've, I've been disconnected from the uh, from the game. So you're just dis disconnected to the the UGM oh. game. Yeah. Let's let's well, well let's let's show uh, um let's say for yeah. um icon that's it I should put that on the I'm screen back in it. it's, it's as easy as that. Yeah. <laughs> now. So I mean, one of the main things about um, with with Android when, when running on Android mm -hmm. is um, Android likes to if you use networking, Android likes to, it to always be the main thing in the front. So if you minimise it, it, it what it what Android will do unless you tell it otherwise, it will um, capitalise it to that app. Gotcha. Right, we we are definitely having some problems receiving you, Justin. <laughs> Was receiving me? No, we are yeah, not you're just receiving in a bit, Dave. Oh, let's. Let me just do a. I'll do a quick check my check my internet quickly. I say my internet's been stupid today. That's when you don't need it to be. It's all fun and games. Yep. Yeah. Three hundred meg. That's pretty good. Okay, receiving me now? I am receiving you You're now. Okay for me. I have green lights. Let's see what happens. Yeah, my, my my zoom is going from white to red to yellow to red to so anyway, let's um <laughs> let's, let's try and play this game then. Let's just see what happens. I'm sorry my internet is playing up today. It's just one of those things. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, we'll try and carry on for as long as we can. Have we just lost Steve? Oh no, he's shrunk himself. No, I, I just shrunk myself. You, you said let's play this game, so I went, I went and clicked on the button. Well, well, no, I, was no, no, I, was, I was about to say, before we do this, just kind of, uh, Justin, once again, we seem to have gotten over those technical itches. I think it's a nine o'clock thing, I really do. Uh, we need to swap our times around, I think. But let's try and do a quick uh, overview of what Games Master is for anyone who doesn't know. Okay. A one minute roundup. You elevate uh, the elevator pitch. The elevator pitch. I mean, there's it's, it's so much that you can do in an elevator pitch, but let's give it a go. Right, it is a four pronged attack on the uh, RPG kind of game. You've got all the tools you ever need for a Games Master, Dungeon Master. So you can create campaigns, um, run games, have players join your games and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Ah, El Kestro says he's got very low upload speeds and he lives down the road from me. So that could be our area. So that is your kind of GM. Play, you can play games, players join your game, run games, send stuff to each other, great stuff. 
for a player, you can join um, games hosted by a GM, DM, and uh, got, as you'll see in a minute, you'll have your character sheets and everything that the the GM can send to you, it all stored against that character sheet. Mm -hmm. The third mm -hmm. thing is a spectator screen, which we will come across in a minute. Um, that shows um, it's an overview of your party that can then go forward into a streamer screen, which will then um, allow you to send one stream from UGM out to your uh, software for broadcasting, whether it be OBS or XSplit or whatever you use. And that will then have live data from the spectator screen on the top of that. And then the fourth thing is for authors and game designers, you can create your own game sets in there with your own rules. Uh, you can do campaign, you know, create campaigns in there and worlds and everything like that. Um, and then once you're kind of happy with it and you've got a version you want to submit to, uh, I don't know, to the community somewhere, uh, you can output whatever you like to a PDF and send it on to people. Yes. Uh, or send it to other users that are using UGM and they can import it and boom, they've got all your rules there ready to rock and roll. So that's it. GM, GM side, player side, spectator and streamers, campaign and game authors. Cool. So we are, if you, if you want to go back and have a look, again, as I said, they are, check out our YouTube. We've got some various kind of uh, videos. I think we did three. We did an overview video. We did the uh, campaign building one. What was the, what was the one in between? Uh, Steve. Uh, <laughs> it was a, a general Q&A, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and we did a general. Q, yeah. I can't remember what we did. Anyway, check them out. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm just confi I'm being trying to think of my character. I just want to play the game. So <laughs> we are gonna we're gonna switch our cameras around. Um, boop. Nope. Wrong one. There I am. So uh, I'm in. <laughs> so as I said, I am gonna be using uh, literally a Kindle. Okay. Yeah, it's my it's my <laughs> I've got I nicked it for my six year old. Shh. Um, but he's, he's supposed to be in bed. So just to prove how easy this is to use uh, my sound is on and my mic is right next to me so any because it, it the play apps uh, justin as the, the the gm can force sounds and animations to each specific player and it doesn't matter if you're in the same room or virtual like this you know just in your own houses and, and playing online it works fantastic either way um so yeah i'm dying to have a have a, have a little go Let's go, let's go kill some bad guys. Let's give it a try. So, okay. Are we ready? I'm going to change my screen over. There we go. So my screen should now be displayed, which you two are not allowed to watch. Okay. You cannot look at the screen. I won't, I won't look. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you know what's coming. So, okay. Um, so we've got two characters. Would you like to introduce yourselves first? Go, Steve. Okay, so I'm going to be playing as Astrel. Now, Astrel is not the hero you wanted. Astrel is not even the hero that you needed. He just is the hero. <laughs> He's a human cleric, and many of you that watch this weekend's Paizo streams will be familiar with him. Uh, he's a follower of Sunray, and he's just about survived everything. I think, in fact, he may even be unkillable. Ooh, wow. That was a big statement. <laughs> and Dave, who are you? What are you playing today? I am Kingsman, as I always am. Um, I am an Elven Ranger. Um, that's pretty much it. I've got my bow, I've got my sword, and I'm ready to get down and dirty with some monster killing. Sounds good. I am level okay. one as well. I, 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 you know, we are level one. That was, yeah. that was really ungenerous of you. <laughs> We've had game for the, the first time. What, the, un what? the unkillable astral yeah. level one cleric. Level one. <laughs> Dave, Dave did try hard this weekend to, to kill Astral. I think most people did because he's. I get the impression he's fairly unlikable. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he managed to survive all three nights. <laughs> Okay, well now we know the characters. Let's let's uh, let's get going. So, 
Uh, you've arrived in this this strange town. Um, the 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 nameplate of the town, which as as you kind of arrive together, is like rocking in the in the wind, and it says Badgerville, yeah, um, yeah. and a population number, which isn't very big. It's sort of Badgerville population, and it's it's about fifty people. Uh, there's lots of crossings out on there. So obviously people have been arriving, dying, and leaving and stuff. Um, it's not a lot going on in Badgerville. It's a bit nondescript, really, a bit boring kind of place. Um, there is a, a tavern uh, just up on the left hand side as you enter the town. Um, there's a few houses here, uh, not a great deal. It's about 8 p.m. in the evening, so most places are shut apart from this one public house, which is called the Boozy Badger. Hey. So there's a theme, Steve. Like there's a theme. <laughs> well, I'll plot that straight away. <laughs> Sorry, Astro. Astro, they like badgers. Is this good? We'll see whether it's good or not. We'll see what magical items we can acquire. I don't know. I don't know what voice I was doing. <laughs> my, my so if we come across badger. one of these fabled daggers of healing. Yes, the golden badger. <laughs> the golden badger. So, where what would you like to do? You've arrived in town. We're going to go straight for the pub. It would be really As most good people would. <laughs> okay, so um, we're right. You, you, you got, there's a, you know, it's not the biggest of pubs in the world. Um, probably, uh, you know, probably get about 10, 15 people in there at the most. Uh, there's a door which is slightly ajar. Uh, inside, you can kind of hear the, the sound of um, like a, a loop player playing in the background. Um, as you as wow. you enter, oh, it's the... actually coming through my. Oh. Uh, it's coming. It's actually coming through my device. That's really cool. It's not. That's nice. Sorry, I I just had to take a moment there. So as you enter, we'll fade out the loop playing, and. Um, yeah, nice. you've got um, as you as you enter the building, there's a bar on the left hand side, which quite goes from one end, goes straight from the south to the north of the building, and there's four tables. As uh, people watching on stream can see, my really bad map drawing. <laughs> <laughs> there's my map. It looks good. That's how we roll. I will also send you a copy of the map. So you can see what it looks like. I was going to say, no need. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, can new note received. Like this is cool. So basically, on my screen, I have uh, a message that says "new note received." I can open that. So if you now click on the little book with the green thing on it. Oh yeah, boom. And you've got uh, notes, which would be the quill. Boop. And you should have a note at the top somewhere. Oh, map. Here we go. There we go. So if you click on bar map, yeah, there's your map. So on there you'll see um, I've got I've got some GM notes which you can't change, but if you want to change and add your own notes to it, you can do that. <laughs> cool. And then the, cro the cross in the top right to save that. Hello, friendly boozer badger people. Nah, there we go. Boom. Save that. Do you want to save them? Yes. So that's now saved against your bar map, and you've now got that in your notepad. So if you ever need to come back to that, you can. Um, there we go. Nice. So, so is it, is there a way to share your notes with other players as well? Yes, there will be. Um, you can. There's there's other things in there like send messages, um, which you can do, which is what the way you would share things between you both. Okay. So, um, like if you want to send a private message to Kingsman, you can click the little envelope there in the middle of the screen, uh, and uh, you can you can send a private note, which then doesn't go near me, and I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Likewise, I can do the same to you. I can send a note to Kingsman that um, that Astral doesn't know anything about. 
are you trying to do, Dave? I was going to see if I can get back to my button screen. Oh, click, click the the little bottom in the, the button oh. with the green thing on it to there go back go. to, and then click combat. Gotcha. And you can go back to your normal screen. Cool. So we are at the um, the Boozy Badger Pub. There is. Um, this old public house bustles with the sound of drunken murmuring, with the smells of sausages, freshly spiced potatoes, and odour of wet badger permeates the air. Many patrons sit nursing drinks. At the end of the bar is a table of commoners shouting about how bad the food is, yet they still eat away. Next to them is a table of grumpy old men playing a game of cards. There also looks to be an ever-growing queue at the bar. How would you like to proceed? Step aside, stand aside. We are heroes. We are here on an urgent mission. We need beer. You notice that there is nobody behind the bar. Uh -huh. Hence why the queue is so long. In that case, never fear everybody. The barman is here. And I will do an acrobatics check to vault <laughs> over the bar and start uh pulling points. Okay, roll an acrobatics check. Okay, so this I've got good on my screen. Uh, let everyone zoom in a little bit so you can see. So I have my list of skills, which I can scroll up and down on. I will hit acrobatics. Ooh, add a buff. Or pair two to your skill set. It's a dexterity based skill. You get plus four to all acrobatic skill checks. And that can scroll as well. So if you want to read about it, you can scroll that text there. Oh yeah. Okay, so all the information's there. That's cool. So I can just do plus four. Well, no, you don't do that. Go no. back. That's if you. That's a buff. So get rid of that and just yeah. click roll check. Roll. Oh dear, I've got a twelve. <laughs> I, think, I think that's okay. I think I think you'll be all right with that. So um, out of nowhere, Kingsman sort of comes into the bar and. Says, hey, everybody. And you see the, the check goes on my screen as well. So I know exactly what ah. you've rolled. Uh, yeah. um, and as, as well as the roll breakdown. Um, Kingsman does this like big jump over the bar and, and uh, yeah. And you make it over to the other side. Okay. And I'll still start pulling points for everybody. Okay. You can start pulling pints. One one of the locals is, is there and he says, so oh, you're not Bob the barman. Who the hell are you? No, good man. I am Kingsman. I am the latest owner of this establishment. I am the manager here now. <laughs> and we are, and we are doing, <laughs> we're doing three pints to celebrate. We are. Uh, perception check. I am proficient in lying. Deception, yeah. Which is great. And I'll roll check. <laughs> I got a 23. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right, then. Um, our mine's an ale. There you go. All right, up at the point. There you go, my good man. On the house. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Cheers! And he turns around and walks off, and uh, the place starts murmuring, and people are wondering what the hell's going on. I shall, um, I shall wander behind the bar. I'm not going to vault over. Okay. <laughs> find find the natural place to go and lift the bar door up and walk in like a normal person. Okay. Uh, no, no elven. Yeah, acrobatics for me. Okay, so yep, yeah, you, you find you find the ri the riser and you, you open up and just go straight in. Uh, what are you can do behind the bar? Um, well, uh, did did I hear the, uh, the the patron say the Kingsman? You're not Bob the Barman. Do yes. I know that Bob Barman is missing? Yeah, well, he, he Bob the Barman is obviously who would normally be running this place. Um, but he is not there for some bizarre reason. I'll, I'll have a quick search around behind the bar if I can. Um, is there any 
letters, papers, sacks of gold. No, there, there's a till um, with with a few coin in it. Um, that, that's about it, really. There is a um, an entrance to the cellar behind there. Um, there's not a lot else, really. There's you know a couple of barrels of ale, a few bottles of some other kind of alcohol, I guess. I shall lift the cellar door up. Um, shout down the stairs. Bob, are you down there? You have patrons waiting. Okay, so you're going to open the cellar and shout down? Yep. Okay. You um, open the cellar and you you shout down there, but you don't hear anything back. It's uh, very dark down there. There's no no um, no torch light or anything like that going on. I um, I I'll open the till. Okay. Um, you said there were a couple of coins in there. Yeah. Uh, what, what sort of denomination are we talking about? Oh, mainly copper and silver. Okay. I, I'll, I'll pick out the silver coins and one copper. Okay. I'll just. What do we call this? Uh, theft. <laughs> so what I'm doing now, I'm going to add some, because I didn't think you were going to rob the place. I, I, <laughs> I'm going to add some random coin in there. So we'll say between... See, the, the players always do what the GMs never think they're going to do. I know, I know. It's just one of those things I should have learned. My players don't do anything, not that much, either. Um, that will do. Okay, so what we do now, I am, it's only Astral that's going to be going through the till. So on Astral's device now, you should see the the screen for, for taking the stuff. So yeah. if you click on um, what loot you want from the top right, you can take what you like. And then let me know when you're happy. I'm happy. Okay, so for people watching that, as a GM, I can see who has taken what. Um, if Kingsman was involved in this as well, I would see what Kingsman has taken as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I can finish that. There we go. So I can always go back in and carry on this um, session. Now that, that uh, amount has been taken out of that till, if I go back into it, will have what's left it won't you know it won't regenerate it it will keep it will keep taps of what is left in that till so um yeah you've you've 20, raided the till 23 silver pieces and one copper piece yeah very nice that's that's now gonna oh you can't see it because my head's in the way <laughs> <laughs> i see in helpfully uh, move, yeah. move move your physically move the tablets dave yeah there you go now, now you can zoom in and then you can physically move the tablet there we go. There you go. So there you go. I have I have twenty three silver pieces and one copper piece. He let and he left the rest of the copper for um when Bob comes back. Yeah. yeah. If if Bob comes back. <laughs> if Bob comes back. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Baron, I am too good for copper. And uh, the reason I took one copper piece is because I'm going to cast light on it and then throw it down the stairs into the cellar and and uh, make it not as dark as it is currently. Okay. Good idea. Yeah, so, so that's fine. I'm, I can do that. So. I'm going to step through uh, the spell. So you can see on my uh, spell list, I do have the you... cantrip light. Steve, can you move it across a bit? Thank you. There you go. Now we can see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have the cantrip light, and if I click on that, then I will actually get the spell description up as well, which is awesome. So I don't have to go looking for it. Um, that says you touch one object is no larger than 10 feet in any dimension until the spell ends the object sheds a bright light 20 foot radius and dim light for an additional 20 feet the light can be coloured as you like completely covering an object with something opaque blocks of light spell ends if you cast again or dismiss it as an action so I'm going to cast light on uh, on the copper coin and because it's copper I'm going to make it a sickly green colour um, okay. and throw it down into the cellar 
Lovely. Okay, so cast that. So that's that's been cast. It's a cantrip, so there's no spell slots involved in that. So your your copper coin sort of lights up in this murky green colour in your hand, and you kind of toss it down the uh, down the steps of the cellar. It can ding 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 ding, and the the cellar is now kind of lit in a sickly green colour. Okay. Uh, did it? Does it reveal anything? Um, you know, Bob hasn't taken a nasty really time from, downstairs. Not really from where you are. Um, it's because it's quite a steep sort of steps going down into the cellar. Um, it's not quite a ladder, but you know, very steep kind of steps going down there. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you do get the impression that once you get down there now, you'll be able to have a much better view. Not that that affects uh, Kingsman, because being an elf. Yep. You see it all. So, yeah. Kingsman, uh, should we see if Bob is in the cellar, or do you wish to run his establishment for the rest of the evening? No, <laughs> I, I think we need to kill something. So, um, I'm just going to grab one of the uh, drunken patrons and uh, invite them to take my place as the brand new head barman and let them continue putting plants for everybody in the house. Okay. Um, there's a there's a guy at the end of the the bar that you do notice. Um, he is a cloaked figure, and he kind of looks up to you in not quite disbelief of what's going on, but um, he doesn't seem overly impressed with what you're doing, and he he just comes straight out and says. What are you doing? I am a good man. I am serving. I am your server for this evening. What can I get? I don't you? think so. No? Why not? I don't think so. And I don't think you should be going down in that cellar. Well, we was going to look for Bob. And my good friend Astro just dropped his uh, coin down there. That is very nice, but I saw him cast a spell on that coin and <laughs> throw it down there. So again, I don't believe you. We, we, I was simply casting light on that coin. I threw it down the cellar to see if Bob had taken a tumble down the stairs whilst he was changing, bar changing a barrel or collecting some other uh, alcohol or foodstuffs. Um, I couldn't see him at the bottom of the stairs, so now I'm going down the stairs to see if Bob... He's in the cellar somewhere. Hmm. Unless, you, of course, you know... Sounds like Bob a has left the building. idea. I will accompany you. Good man. We like, like this winner. It's nice that we have a brave volunteer from the audience. Thank you. I will be following you. Okay, Loki. So you follow Astral and I'll follow you. Okay. Okay, so um, he gets let me up. Establish some guy down first, then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, send the healer so he first. Gets, he gets up from um, from his his position at the end of the bar, and just walks around, looks at looks at you, Kingsman. Looks at the bar. Sorry, I don't know that. I didn't ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can be muted. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> um, he looks at you, Kingsman, looks at the bar as if to say, I'm not jumping over that. And then walks around, walks around the bar over to the other side and says to you, Astral, after you. Very well. I'm used to leading from the front and I'll climb down the stairs. Okay, as you as you climb down the stairs, this place is very very dark. So let's let's just sh set the scene. Ooh, <laughs> dusty cellar. So this uh, this place is very dark. It's old. It's really old. It's dusty and it smells musty all at the same time. 
The steps lead down into a small square cellar, which would have been in darkness, but is now lit dimly. You can, once you're sort of in sort of on the step there, you can see, you can hear muffled noises coming from the back of the room. Uh, the back of the room is to the east. So, um, and because you're, it's, uh, it's dimly lit, you can see that this room is around about 25 feet square. The north and south walls are lined with bottles and in the center of the room are five barrels of ale. At the east of the room is a bottle rack partition. Okay. Um, I'll wait for the others to reach the bottom of the stairs. Um, once they do. Audience, there is another lovely map that you can uh, <laughs> you can see there. So once Kingsman is down, I'll make my way uh, to the east of the room. Okay, as you as you're walking down the steps. Um, yeah. So what I'm just going to show people uh, watching in a minute what we can do here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to check on my players. Um, so Astral has a passive perception of 13. Kingsman has a passive perception of 12. Mm -hmm. So um, you, because you are leading, you notice that there is a loose floorboard on the way down. So if you put Kingsman down first, he would have fallen through it. <laughs> so you notice on the way down that one of the floorboards is looking not, not very good and don't, you don't think it's going to be able to hold your weight. Okay, I'll, I'll step over that. Okay. Um, and then I'll shout to the guy that's following us and Kingsman not to step on it. And then I'll remember my manners because I do occasionally. Um, and I'll, I'll shout out to the guy that's following me. What's your name, anyway? My name is D. D. People I only know. call me D. I am uh, I am Asterel, and this is uh, this is Kingsman. It's a pleasure to meet you both. Huzzah. Let's find. And those that's looking at my screen, you can see that there there was a, uh, I put it in as a trap, but it wasn't a trap, it was more of a, just a dodgy floorboard um, with some information on what would have happened if they um, hadn't um, found it. So there we go. Cool. Okay, let's carry on. I, I was just so, going to say, just to interrupt there, the, the bit where you did that cut scene, uh -huh. it was really good because, I mean, it was very, very simple. It's just text and a black screen. But mm. we were just having some fun up in the bar and we've met, you know, D and then we come down and then just by having that, having that cut was, was, was a bit kind of right people. Now we're into the serious bit, like, leave, <laughs> leave the jokes upstairs We're we're into the, we know we're going down into the deep dark cellar. It was really good. It was strange how effective that, that was just yeah. for like just just blanking your screen. It's like, where's my screen gone? Screen. Yeah. Yeah. Where's my character gone? Where's my character gone? Oh no! I'm in, oh no! Now I'm in the cellar. Right. Okay. That yeah, is so really, that, that's really good. Really effective. That was on like every screen. So people that are on spectator, people that are using looking at the stream, you can do it. So it will you know, do it on everyone's everyone's mm. devices. So it's pretty cool. It brings you, like you say, it does. It brings you right into into what's happening. Um, and don't forget, you've also got which. Uh, we haven't had any bad jokes yet, but we've got the tumbleweed. Yay! <laughs> so, <laughs> that is great. Which it gets way too much use in our games. <laughs> so okay, um, so this dimly uh, dimly lit kind of cellar basement, um, you can hear kind of noises coming from the far east corner, which you can't see behind because there is a partition there. I will um, pick pick up the coin, <clears throat> carry it with me, sort of um, like that between two fingers, and um, I, I think I'll draw my mace as well, and then I'll head towards the uh, the gap in the partition, which I think is south east corner of the room, so I can poke my head round and, and take a look at wherever this noise is. Okay, um, as you as you're heading down um, to the east. 
where where that little entrance to the partition is, um, you hear kind of the sounds of kind of growling <laughs> coming from behind the partition. That's not a rat, Steve. Astral. It's not a rat, Astral. No, no, it's not. I'm immediately knock an arrow. I'm going. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm ready for action. D. I said, are you armed, D? Do you have a a weapon? Possibly. I can defend myself. Okay, good. You might need to in a minute. Stay here on the stairs. <laughs> Hopefully you can defend us as well. I shall continue walking towards the gap. Okay. You notice um, movement from behind, it's just between the bottles in the, in the partition as two things come running out towards you from behind. And this is where we're going to start an encounter now. So cool. I've already got an encounter set. I'm going to click the start button. I send that. Pops up on everyone's screen. Yeah, roll for initiative. Roll for initiative. Um, on your devices, what you can do, you can, um, there's, a, there's an initiative button on your combat tab at the top. Cool. So if you press that, so I can see there, Astral has rolled a five. I'm guessing you're a plus zero. I am a plus zero, yes. Yeah, so Astral has rolled a five. You say it was at the top. Where am I looking? Top top right. Where it says... There's this combat stats. Um, yep. There's a plus four oh. in the middle. There we go. Roll initiative. Oh, I've already said. You rolled a, you rolled a three. Plus four this gives you seven. So, um, so we've got a five... Um, three for Kingsman. I can auto roll this if I wanted to, but it's always nice to do it yep. with, with people. So you can um, roll with real dice as well if you want to. Yep. Um, and a five. So you can see there Kingsman has rolled a seven and Astral has rolled a five on there. And yep. fortunately they are rolled pretty, pretty badly. And um, to your amazement from behind the partition run out two kobolds oh okay and they immediately want to start to attack you so from here we could we, we could um have a uh, virtual tabletop go in um i normally point down a, a top down map mm -hmm. which i don't have enough cameras in this room to do so we're going to do this it's theater in the mind for today yep. okay so two kobolds they come running out from the east corner and they immediately come um, into contact with astral the first kobold is going to try and attack so if i look at my eyedropper i can see i've got um, a, they, they're both going to have their their um, daggers drawn as opposed to their ranged weapon so i've got a 1d4 plus 2 damage if i if i manage to hit them yeah um, they do have pack tactics so they are together and they are within five feet of each other so they will be fighting at advantage mm -hmm. okay so i'm going to attempt to um attack astral so i'm going to roll i'm going to roll at advantage i'm going to roll 2d20s and yeah that's going to hit 17 17 hits. Plus yeah. four, so that's going to be a 21 to hit. So I'm now going to be able to roll a d4 for damage. One. Plus, I think they are plus two, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's yeah. Uh, three mm -hmm. damage, please, Astral. So if you click your hit point thing at the bottom, that's it. And you can automatically see on my screen it's all gone down as well. Yeah. So that is that kobold. The second one is he's going to try and attack you as well. He's yeah. got to do it. So he's going to do the same. But we all know Astral is invincible, so we're okay. We're all okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> wow. You did program the dice. Wow. That's... Hi, guys. Come play my game. Be fun. Just TPK. <laughs> 
Oh dear. Okay, so um, yeah, that's going to be two d four. Five. Plus two is seven. Is seven. So <laughs> Astral is unconscious, unfortunately. Wow. So that that was quick. That was that was really quick. And Kingsman. Okay, I am. Wow, I have literally just seen all this happen. King, uh, Astral is down. I had an arrow knocked already. So the one that the uh, the first one, the first cobalt, the closest one to, to Astral. I'm just gonna, in disbelief, just let go of that arrow, and and let it shoot. Okay, so the closest one is Cobalt Two. He's the one that attacked yeah. first. Okay, so I've already knocked an arrow, or do I need to reload my arrow? Should we we no, set just up the dice? Roll to attack. attack. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, oh. So oh. push your um, the blue one, which you programmed as. Your... <laughs> oh my god! I've rolled a lock. Oh come on! <laughs> Did you just roll a one? Yes. I know we're pla we're only playing for an hour just to test this out, but come on, if the GM rolls twenties and the players roll ones. <laughs> I shoot Astral while he's unconscious. You, you know what you probably do? That'll be my first death save. Right. And I I'll, I'll leave I'll leave the arrow in his leg until he wakes up. So they, oh, they, oh, yeah. they shot you, Astral. They shot you. <laughs> uh, your your arrow dis you, you you know you're a level one character. You're not overly confident, and uh, you you pull your arrow back, and you kind of let go of the wrong hand, and the bow kind of <laughs> <let go laughs> the wrong hand. smacks you in the nose. Um, doesn't do any damage, but you're feeling pretty stupid at this moment in time. <laughs> uh, Astral, please make a death save. <laughs> So roll, just roll a d20. That's a fail. That is a fail. So on your screen, um, if you click on the yeah, click on the hit point bit in the middle. A death save. Yeah. And then a my yeah, a plus on that plus bad on that. one. That's it. And save. Yep, yeah, you're still alive. Just. So okay, there we there we go. Um, that's round one. <laughs> So wow. I'm going to zoom in because I don't know if it's showing up very well because it's on. Oh, you've got a thing across your the, yeah. I've I've got I've got that across yeah. Unconscious. It says says unconscious. I'll, I'll try and make that a bit clearer. There you go. You get that 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 appears now that I am unconscious. So I don't want to find out what happens if I manage to die. But <laughs> you know I, I will I'll update you should that. Happen. Okay, um, new round. I, I I was just looking at my. Uh, can I can I have Cobalt as my favoured enemy, please? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> and just to let everyone know, what does that what does that do for let, for you? Let me go back and find out. Uh, will that will that work? Uh, if you click on your enhancements. Enhancements. And. Is there a favoured enemy there? No, it hasn't popped up. Okay, click on the... And let's look at your screen. Uh, yeah, click on the Elf Traits header, and you can cycle through your different one. You've got no feet, so click it again. Favoured enemy. Uh, there we go. There we That's go. your range of features. Uh -huh -huh. I get advantage on wisdom, survival checks to track them. Tracking, hunting, talking. That's all. There's no extra yeah. damage or anything. It doesn't really you know. help you in this situation, but, no. you know, it cool. still is your favoured favored enemy. Yep. Okay. Um, I am going to rush in and attack. I'm going to... I'm going to... Oh, you've got some movement. So yep. you've wasted your action, so you've got some movement now. Do you, what, Where do you want to go? Um, because I am so embarrassed and now angry that I used the wrong hand to shoot my bow, <laughs> I am gonna, um, I am going to charge Cobalt number two, and I'm gonna rugby tackle him. I'm gonna throw myself physically, poof, and and sh throw my body into him. 
Okay, okay. So, um, I mean, you've used your actions, so you can't really do a grapple now. No. Can I do a free uh, a free attack punch? Oh, go on then, because you're almost dead. Let's let's yeah. let's 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 do it. All right. So, what's the best way to do an an unarmed attack? Just um, just just roll a d twenty. See if you can hit. Let's do that first. Then a thirteen. That's a hit. Oh, oh. smack! I smack, smack. Carwell in his big jaw, right right on the snout of his nose. Okay, he, you smack him. He, he receives one damage for your hit. Yep. And he hear it go, ah! gives a little bit of a squeal, but and I'll I'll scream back. Rah! You're ready to go. Yep. Um, it's his go. He's going to uh, attack you again. Well, attack you this time. Yeah. So he is going to um, roll. See if he can attack with his little dagger. Oh no. He's got the badger dagger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he'd stab me with a badger dagger. It's an 11. 15 to hit. Does that hit you? Oh, let's have a look. Where my armor class fifth is my armor class is 15. So yes. Oh, so it just hits you. Um, but not a crit this time, thankfully. So please take uh, three plus one. I think it is, wasn't it? Yeah, take, take uh, oh, plus two, three. So take five damage, please, as he sort of thrusts this knife into you. You jump on him, punch him in the nose, and then he immediately just pushes his dagger into your side. Oh. Painful. Very so painful. In, in spectator mode, which is what I've got turned on at the moment, um, I get those changes in the nice uh, fadeaway text. It, yeah, it so people expression. watching get that nice graphic pop-up, yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, the second kobold kind of gives a little bit of a grunt and um, kind of slashes at you with his dagger as well. Okay. That's a oh. twenty. It's a twenty to hit. <laughs> uh, sorry, an eighteen. So it's not a crit, but it's a hit. Um. I was 20, yeah. So he is going to do 1d4 to you again. So that take you to four damage. So please take a further four damage. Ooh. I'm down to three. And my, my it is your red. turn. Okay, I'm right. Um, let's see what else I've got because I, I dropped my bow. I've got my short sword. See what I can do with my short sword. Equip as action combat. Um, it's a one d six plus four, uh, and a plus six to hit. So I will uh, roll. T I'm, so I'm gonna just growling at these two kobolds. Okay. Because now I'm bleeding, and I'm gonna slowly pull out my short sword, and I say, "That's not a knife. <laughs> this is a knife." And rah, and then I'm gonna roll my my oh no, it's a six. six. It's a yeah. twelve. You get to add six to it. Oh okay. <clears throat> All right, right. So it's a twelve. This is a twelve here. Yeah. Um, yeah, just hits. Okay. So what's the uh? How do I roll my one d six plus four? Because I've already pre-programmed. So click, click on the dice at the top. The 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 pink one. Yep. Then you can actually choose what you want to roll. 1d6. How many do I want to roll? Just the one. I rolled a five plus four. Nine. Nice. That's good. Here we go. Um, which one was you going for? The, the one you've punched in the face? Yes, Cobalt 2. Yeah, so you kind of just, just drop your bow, get your sword, and you did ram it right through the top of his head and it, and it kind of goes straight through and out the back of his neck and it's and it kind of slides down your sword and you're now stuck on, on the butt of your sword with this kobold head stuck on it um but yeah he's dead he's very dead cool good and I, as I, i'm just gonna can i like let him just i hold the sword down at a down angle 
and see if he slides off. And if he doesn't slide off, can I just put my foot on him and ugh, push him off? Yeah. Yeah, he kind of he's, he, he kind of slides down a little bit on there, and you get your get your heel on on it. And then and, uh, I look up back to the cobalt number one. I go next. <laughs> this cobalt kind of looks at, um, looks at you in like not very, <laughs> not very sure now. Shaggy. <laughs> um, astral. Yeah. Um, the the strange, mysterious uh, D comes up to you, and um, he said he kind of bends down. He whispers. He goes, "This might hurt a little." And he gets his dagger out, <laughs> and he stabs you with it. <laughs> okay. And um, what we're going to do? I'm going to show people what that is. <laughs> So we've got this is this is the the weapon that we created um, the other week. So he's going to stab you with it, which gives one d four damage but one d eight healing. Okay, so he's going to give you the damage is not going to kill you, so it's not a point rolling that, but it gives you one d eight of healing. So <laughs> you, get, you get one point of healing. <laughs> which brings you back to life. You kind of open your eyes and wondering what the hell is going on. And there's this, the guy over you with his knife in your gut. Um, but it, you, you kind of feel this, this kind of essence of, of healing along with this blade in you, which feels very strange because it should be hurting, but it's as he's pulling it out, it, it's kind of healing the skin as it, as it goes, as it comes out of your body. Um, and it's your go. Well done, Badger Dagger. Right. Yeah, uh, uh, just make it like uh, in uh, Pulp Fiction when they when they stab him with the oh, yeah. adrenaline needle. Just just sit straight bolt upright, ready to go. Yeah. Um, so I'm instantly going to cast the Cantrip Sacred Flame at um, the Cobalt I can see. Okay. So that's a Dexterity saving throw. Dexterity we'll take one d eight radiant damage. So if I look at my kobold, um, I can see my dexterity save is plus two. So what's the DC for that? Um, it is... What have I got to save on? Uh, 13. 13. 13. <laughs> so roll a d20. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What? <laughs> it, uh, yeah. yeah. At least you weren't hitting me with it, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he passes that with flying colours. I, I will then stand up uh, as part of my move action. Is he is he stood next to me at all? Um, no, he's moved more into the room a bit more because he went after Kingsman after he... Yeah, you went down. Uh, okay, so if I if I if I stand up, um, that's normally half my move. I've got enough move left to to get over to him. To yeah, him. yeah. I mean, the room the room's only a twenty twenty five foot square room anyway, so you've okay. got you can pretty much move wherever you like in that room. Okay. I will I will then just stride up to him and, and punch him the same as Kingsman did as as a bonus action, <laughs> or attempt to punch him anyway. Okay. Have you not got your mace? Uh, yeah, but that's, that would be an action to attack with a mace. Of course. Whereas, yeah. um, uh, just a punch would be a, a bonus action. Jeez. That's not good. A two. You kind of, yeah. you, you're, a bit, <laughs> you're still a bit disorientated from it, and uh, you, kind of, you kind of look drunk as you're going up to this kobold and <laughs> try to lash out, thinking it's kind of human-sized, and, and go straight over his head, and it kind of looks up at you. Gives a bit of a growl, as, as well as a kind of a muttly kind of <laughs> kind of laugh. I just look back and go, "We're gonna get you, Kerbold." <laughs> okay. Um, new round. So we're now we're now in a new round. Again, this is now round three. Um, 
you hear from um, sort of just next to you, you can hear, well, I just wanted to see if you pitiful beings would be stupid enough to want to, to want to, uh, well, let me follow you down and, uh, and see what's going on down here. Well, my ancestors created this town for food, hence the name, and I'm here to pick up my inheritance. And the the being behind you kind of starts crunching and its bones start sort of moving into different positions. And before your very eyes, this um, this mysterious <laughs> figure is um, transforming into a were badger. Why did we create these monsters? <laughs> and we didn't think this through, Steve. Do you have we're level one? How can a level one fight so against a were badger? There's this were it's, it's more of a giant badger he's turned into. <laughs> so this town is obviously um, was 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 kind of created to entice adventuring parties here over the over the you know many many years for his this guy's family to feed on. Um, hence, at the beginning, with the uh, population going up and down like a yo-yo. So that his move was to transform uh, the, the kobold is backing off to the back of the room he doesn't want to get involved in this so he, he kind of backs right off to the east the southeast corner of the room um and kingsman it's your turn Ooh. um I will stand facing the were badger. Uh huh. Um, what did he say? His name was D. D. I will. I will stand there and face D, with my sword out in front of me, and I will say in my bravest voice, while keeping one hand on my wound. <laughs> um, we mean you no harm. We mean you no disrespect. At this point, it you doesn't really understand kind of common because it's transformed into this into this badger form as such and um it's just growling and snarling and getting ready to run at you it thinks your food hmm. oh i'm getting ready to run as well <laughs> um at the moment it's between you and the uh steps out of there Actually, no, it's not. It's in the middle of, but it's between you and Astral, because he went. He he came to um, heal Astral. So he thought it was too easy. Hmm. I mean, he likes to play with his food. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So in that case, I will get into battle ready position in a stance, and I will salute him with my sword. Give it a little spin, and I will attack. Okay. Roll so, to attack. Roll to attack is here and here. And yes, eighteen. Good. Now Good. we're getting somewhere. Okay, so okay. now roll to attack die. That is it's my short sword, so this is one d six plus four. Uh, how many dice? Just a one. I've got a three. For, uh, so it's seven. Seven. Good. Seven points of damage. So yeah, you um, you kind of lunge forward and you take a big chunk off the side of it. It gives a bit of a, but it's it's still in pretty good shape. Uh, do you want to move anywhere, or are you happy to stay where you are? Um, could I have moved through? through past him but not in terms of um just basically kind of move around him yeah get a, get around him so during okay. my attack i want to like cut the ribs and then keep on moving so that i'm more on the astral side of the room. yeah so you're not you're not invoking opportunity you're just going yeah. right round. <laughs> yeah cool yeah that's all right so you're both on the same side you're both on the east side of him now Astral. I. 
I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on Kinsman. Okay. Um, so Cure Wounds is a creature you touch, and now that he's on the same side of the room as me, I will just walk up, smack him on the shoulder and say, go for it, Kinsman. You've got this. Cool. So D8 plus your spellcasting mod. You get wow. 13 hit points That's back. It. We're, we're rocking and rolling. 12 hit points back, sorry. And what's your spellcasting modifier? It plus five. Is, uh, plus three is the modifier. Uh, it's plus five to save, yeah. 17 is plus three. So cool. Yeah, so... 11 points back. And that sorry. brings you pretty much back up to full health, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. I'm back on top. Very good. Okay. And are you wanting to move anywhere, Astral? I will... I'll move up so I'm stood next to Kingsman. Okay. Um, Mace in hand, ready to go. Excellent. Okay, new round. So um, the 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 wear badger is now fully formed and is going to attack. So I'm going to attack Kingsman um, because of that horrible sword round the ribs. Didn't like that at all. It does, unfortunately, have multi-attack. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it can attack you once with its bite and once with its claws. So I'm just going to roll 2d20. Ooh. I have... Yeah, they're going to both hit. So yeah. that's a 16... 16 and a 15. So I'm going to roll my d6 first. Weird. One. <laughs> Good. I'll take that. So, one plus one. so that's two damage, please, Kingsman. Uh, so he's gone and kind of he went to give you a big, good, big old kiss, but yeah. just nips you instead. Um, and then it gives you a good old slap with its claws, which is 2d4. Uh, for five, for six damage. Six damage. Okay. So it's giving you a little bit of a nip. And then, but the, the claws gave you a good old hit, yep. sort of slicing through your shoulder. Um, the kobolds still hanging back into the in the corner. Kingsman, you're okay. up. Um, yeah, while we are tussling, he's got in some good hits, and I, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to grab the short sword in both hands and scream as I start laying into him. So we will do. Uh, so that's a 13 so that's a 17 to hit that's good is that right yep yes um and we are doing 1d6 plus the four that's an eight damage eight damage it lets out a huge four. as it kind of collapses on the floor and as it falls onto the floor its body kind of reforms back into its human human form, and the kobold um, just darts for the exit. So it literally runs straight past you all, um, provokes opportunity if you want it. Yes, please. Yes. Okay, so um, you both haven't used uh, so. Astral World of Nine. Um, that's a 13 in total. That's good. Oh, I ah, got a crit. Ah, I got a go. crit. Yay. <laughs> so let's, uh, Astral, do you want to roll for your damage first? Yep. Uh, three. <laughs> three. That's okay. It means that um, Kingsman's crit doesn't go to waste. Good, good. And Kingsman, do you want to roll double damage? Yeah. Uh, so it is. So 2d6. 2d6. Boom. That's 12 in total. Yeah. How do you want to do it? Uh, as it goes to run past, uh, 
I've still got my short sword in two hands and I will a baseball stance and cleanly through the neck and let his head sail and spin in the air. Cool. So as it runs past, it kind of darts. It sees its it sees its um its kind of master defeated on the floor. It runs past and you kind of baseball bat its neck. Yep. Its head flies off and it it funny enough it bounces up the steps of the cellar <laughs> and pings off into the bar and you hear from upstairs Bob the Black <laughs> as his head goes flying into the bar and and there we go. We've uh, we've we've defeated we've defeated the, the the things there. You get um, let's give you a bit of experience. Oh, nice! <laughs> You've got some experience there. You both um, can be a part of the looting. So there's your loot. Right, this is where it all comes down to: fastest finger first, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> I've added in the special. Have you got it on your screen first? I don't know. But I'm, I, don't... <laughs> I, was in, I was in spectator mode, so oh. maybe that's why. Ah, uh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll reopen it. There you go. Oh, look at this. This is awesome. I'm having it. Lot. I'm having it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I left you a sling. This, this is where my lack of technology uh, ability. Um, just, I'm not taking the copper. I'm, I'm having the copper then. There you go. I left you four. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I love the sling bullets. That's quite fun. I like that. And on, on my screen, I can see who's taken what, which is why I was laughing, because I could just see Kingsman taking everything. <laughs> and there's nothing apart from four copper left and two lots of clothes. Anyone want them? I'll have the clothes. There we go. I've got 20 sling bullets, two slings, one for each hand, and two sets of clothes. Oh, really? There we go. So that's uh, everything. Whoop, that's my debug screen. There's the loot done. So if I finish looting now, that's now should be in your inventory screens. Yes. Same name. Yeah, so I got the badger dagger. <laughs> there you go. Look, there it is. It's the item we made in the previous session. Yeah. And then with with this you um, with this dagger you don't know anything about it so let's pretend you've rested so if you've rested with it you can click um, you've learnt it already haven't you yep. so and you've achieved you can attune to it now if you go into it all of your so if you click badger dagger now boom uh, actions oh. uh, badger dagger actions everything's now available for. For you to use item is a tune. Yeah. Equip and, a, add a, equip and a, an add action. Boom. And then that'll appear in your combat tab now, ready to to go. And you can see the different actions appear underneath the item. So you've got a stab or a throw. So you you know desperate, you can chuck it at someone if you want to. Um. Yeah. So there we go. Nice. So you you. You finish off, you hear a lot of um, kind of squealing people from the, the top uh, in the bar um, as this kind of head has rolled in there. And um, yeah, where do you want to go? I'm going to, uh, is there any alcohol down here in the cellar? I'm, I'm there's, for there's, strong spirits. There's bottles of stuff down there. There's kegs of ale down there. I'm going to take a few bottles, uh, assuming that they are the, the strongest spirits, and I'm going to take my two sets of clothes and start ripping them up into strips. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Oh, you're going to burn the place down. I'm going to burn the place down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm making a couple of Molotov cocktails. I, I shall look over at, uh, at, at Kingsman and raise an eyebrow and offer one. Um, yeah, okay. I'll have one. Okay, so I'll, I'll make four. So we've got one in each hand. 
for them. Once, <laughs> once the crafting is complete, I shall climb the ladder back up into the bar. Okay. And I shall cast a spell called Thermatelgy. Okay. Um, and I shall make my eyes glow and my voice boom like the sound of God. Excellent. And I shall announce loudly to the bar, anyone who wishes to survive should leave now. The place goes, Whoa, blue neck! And they're all, you can, people are kicking, their, there's cards flying all over the place and drinks as, a, as most of the people in the tavern are just like jumping over each other to get out of there thinking they've just heard the voice of God coming from above. And, uh, yeah, the place is empty. Wow. I, I shall smash all of the drinks behind the bar with my mace. Okay. And then using Sacred Flame, I uh -huh. shall light the spilled drink behind the bar uh, and then use that uh, that fire to light two pieces of cloth I have in the Molotov cocktails and then I should just throw them into the corner of the room to spread the fire about the bar as much as possible okay so yeah yeah you, you do that the place is a flame is burning right down the bottles are exploding as they're getting hot and the and the liquid is igniting and yeah the place is absolutely in flames and the people outside are like, oh, like, oh, the pub, not the pub. <laughs> and there we go. I think we are we are done. Um, one thing that you do hear before the whole place just falls down, you 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 hear a, a, one of the patrons say, "Did you find Bob the barman down there?" And you hear a scream coming from the cellar as the whole place goes. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I, I just I should look over at whoever said that and I'll say Nope. The went down with the shit. <laughs> and there we go. We're done. That, <laughs> that is superb. The um I actually found like the cutscenes, the extra bit of looking at what Steve's roles are and stuff like that, I really actually loved. And I found it actually just by um kind of having a having a little go, having a little play. That I start I was really picking it up. Yeah. And everything felt comfortable. Which is the best part. And again, so uh, just to just to kind of recap, I am using a Kindle and it, it, it works on a Kindle. So you know, um really, really kind of uh impressed with that. But yeah, I mean everything is everything is there. See, so, so combat, combat is much more engaging when it's not your turn. When you can see what's going on. When you yes. can see what's going on. Yeah. And, and, and so one of the things with playing online is there's so many other distractions that you don't really follow when it's not your go, especially if there's like five or six players. Yeah. Uh, it's not the same as sitting around the table and seeing people people's dice roll and then what they're doing and, and yeah. stuff like that. There, there is... Yeah, you know, on on Zoom it is difficult to stay engaged during combat. But I, I what I was doing um, was when it was Dave's go, I was just sticking it in spectator mode, mm. so I can see his character sheet, I could see his roles, I could see the damage he was taking. It, it was really yeah. good. And you can see when it, when it's his turn, it kind of brings him to the front. Um, obviously, if you've got if you have images against your characters, that that's what would normally go in them spaces under mm. your names there. Um, but yeah, it just makes it. I was, that's why we kind of created the spectator mode. It, it just makes it more interesting for when it isn't your turn. So if it's a big combat or, or I mean, our, with our game, there's six of us, I think. Hmm. So there's quite a bit, a lot of stuff going on in between. But when you when you put it on spectator mode, you can see what's going on. Yeah. And, and you can see who looks like crap because they're you know, half dead. Um, you can see the death saves on people. You can see who's poisoned, who's not poisoned. Yeah. So... Yeah. It's yeah, it's a it's a good kind of thing, and then and like 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 you were saying, Steve, like when um, when you deduct your hit points, it bombs up on the screen, and it yeah. makes it look quite fun. And same with experience, experience goes across there. Was there a way of seeing the initiative tracker in spectator mode? Uh, there is on the um, <clears throat> the new spectator and streaming mode that we're releasing. Um, that has 
like initiative tracker has loads of extra stuff in it mm -hmm. so um but the one you've got there is kind of what you would what you would have as, as a player um until we released a new initiative tracker which is coming soon so, um let, let's do a, a quick recap on, on on the software we've got the kickstarter which is ending ending soon and that was kind of like one project <clears throat> we mentioned before we went on air you, you're working on um, like a new dice system yeah what what are the, can you tell us about more projects that are up and coming you mentioned initiative tracker what else well, are you refining there's a lot i mean there's a lot of stuff in there there's a few blank screens at the moment like blank descriptions which will be all filled in um we're kind of giving it a bit a little bit of a facelift bring some of the graphics um more in line with some of the other graphics so everything kind of looks like it belongs together yeah. uh, as well as the um the themes so you'll be able to cause I've, I've showed you the sci-fi themes and stuff like that yeah. before so you've got that as well um the, the the big kind of things are the dice roller which is looking awesome really nice it's proper physics dice so it's as if you're rolling the dice um they like bump bump off each other and all this stuff it's really nice cool. so that's that that will replace or well it would be an option as well as the pop-up because sometimes people might not want it they just want a very quick boom this is what you've rolled um so it'd be an option to have that uh, the physics dice as opposed to just the pop-up thing the other thing we're, we're looking at um well it's almost kind of done is the the updated spectator streaming module which is at the moment you've got um the player details and stuff like that so you can overlay all the stats and stuff like that but the the new um bits that we're adding is you've got i mean it's, you've already got there but it's not enabled you've got tickers you've got graphic boxes that you can have there for like you know like you have your adverts and stuff in different places yeah. but it enables you to do things through ugm as well so you could use those boxes to display things like the badger dagger details so you don't have to bring it up on a kindle and zoom in and all this stuff you can just go right this is what we're looking at boom, and it appears in a box straight on your screen um as well as the initiative tracker the um loop distribution which is always fun to see who's got what um i mean there's you know there's functionality wise at the moment it was a case of getting everything done so it works and we've done that we did that like you know a year ago yeah. and once we get to that position got to that position it was then right let's let's work on this area and tart it up a bit i mean the last thing we did a lot of work on the encounter module um which has got loads of features in there that we didn't even touch on tonight um like you know um adding npcs in there adding your own party members in there so if you've got people coming along with you you can add them in there um uh, pulling in enemies in from other encounters in different places in the in the building you can do that so if someone sounds an alarm you can pull in bad guys that are in different rooms that were like set up as encounters in them different rooms so that if you've got like two kobolds in an east room um you can then okay it's sounds an alarm then two kobolds are now in here so when you then defeat them you go to the east room they're, they're not there anymore because they've they've moved and they've been killed so that was quite cool um i mean i've got where's my book i mean this is my notebook of what what we're you know working on uh, loads of different game sets that are going to be included uh, at the moment it's uh, fifth edition um where we're also including 3.5 pathfinder pathfinder second and starfinder they'll all be in there on launch um the game the the big thing is the the authoring side of it so you can create your own rule sets and stuff like that where uh, that that's all working uh, you just need at the moment it, it i'm just tweaking on the user interface of setting it all up to make it really easy so at the moment you can you know all the compendiums are editable very easily um like i mean we I don't know if is my screen still active yeah 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 so you know if, if um i'm just going to come out of our game now so i'm gonna this is our the gm lobby 
So I can have info, I've got information on the game, which is Badger Test, that's what I called it. You choose your campaign, choose your game set. You can send some messages to everyone, wake them up if they're, if they're not there. That's cool. Um, <laughs> it's quite cool. Or click on that and it's got my voice. <laughs> Um, oh, and what I did to um, Steve and Dave earlier on, they they loaded it up with no characters. So I sent them a character sheet, which you can do from here. Uh, you can send individual messages from here, or you can kick players and stuff like that from here. So um, that's quite useful. But what I'll do, I'm going to come out of that. So your games will be disconnected now. Yep. <clears throat> um, disconnected. So if I go into my game set editor, so at the moment, the rules editor, I'm completely changing that to make it really nice and easy. Um, it all works. It's just I just need to do a bit, of, make it a bit more you know, user friendly. But you've got you can edit classes, add all your enhancements, spells. If we go in here, we find the badger, badger dagger, which is what we created the other week. It's in my homebrew game set, which I can pull through if I want to into any game. Uh, and to set it up was really easy. It, you, you just go in here. Can it be thrown? Yes, it can. Um, rarity, bit of description. I can have some GM only notes on here, which is useful if you're creating uh, things like cursed items that you don't want the player to know about. So I can have in the description loaded stuff about this item. But in the GM only notes, which only I can see and they can't, I can say if they decide to use this, it's got an adverse effect or whatever. Um, other details, things like cost, how much it's weigh, you know, the weight of it, um, range for when you're chucking it. Does it require attunement? Is it a cursed item? Does it use charges? Uh, all the normal kind of stuff. Does it give you immunities, resistances? I mean, most of the stuff for normal items is going to leave as it is. Um, item modifiers, actions, which for this one, it was literally stab and throw, which do the same thing, but they're, you know, you either stab it or you chuck it. Um, and that's just, it does 1d4 piercing, 1d8 healing. So it takes a bit, it gives them a bit of damage, but also hopefully it's going to heal them more than it did damage, yeah. which may not always be the case. Uh, and that's kind of how we created the Badger Dagger. And it, we did that in about two minutes. Yeah. And that was with yeah. people sort of saying what they think it should be doing. Um, and the same can be done for spells. You know, look at Acid Arrow, for instance. You know, you just go in, change the type of spell it is, components. Does it require concentration? It's description. Can it be cast at a higher level? Um, and the area effect uh, is quite cool because that will be linked in with um some of the new effects that we're adding which we're doing as well which will be like your you know the hit points go and you will you, you'll have spell effects and stuff on your portraits as well nice. um yeah and that's you you specify that here how's it do it it fix yourself any kind of things like that so do you get the um like I, I had unconscious across my character portrait. Yeah. Do you do other conditions as well, like charms, fear? Yeah, they appear differently. So if I if I go out um, and I go back to actually, I mean, you can do it because you've got your you've got your character sheet there. Um, if you go, uh, I can't. If you can change your screen so I can see your. I can join network. No, don't bother about joining network. Just go alone. So come out of there. Go alone. Go alone. Go choose the sketchwork game set. It's just a little funny man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have to do that the first time. It's a requirement from open gaming license. There we go. Um, and if you go to your portrait. Yep. So, uh, not your portrait, so your hit point button at the bottom. You can add conditions. So I come out, come out of there. Go to your hit points and then click conditions. Yeah. And then tick whatever conditions you want applied. So to put the tick, put it in the tick box. So you can have multiple. So tick a couple of things. 
Oh, and then click save exactly. conditions. And then they appear next to your portrait. Oh, yeah. And if you want to know what they do, you can click the faces of those port of those conditions. So if you click the the yellow head or the charmed head, and it will come up and tell you what that actually means. So That's it's nice. very it's very easy. And that, that also appears on your spectator screen as well when you're in a network game. So it appears next to your next to your portrait so you can um anyone can see oh what's, he's got that funny symbol does it mean they can click it and say oh he's poisoned right okay um so yeah and to, to get rid of him just go back into conditions and, and just untick him very very easy yeah or you, you know they can, can and you can display i think there's like nine or ten we can display at one time so you're not going to run out of space and it's a bit sad if you end up with uh, that many conditions. A bit, a bit of everything, yeah. Yeah, sticking like eight, I don't know. That kind of oh, build right, up. Yeah. <laughs> and all the all the art was done between um, Pete and so Pete's done all like the two D art, and Andy's done all the three D art. So it's all all the artworks done by our guys as well. So it's. Uh, the funny faces and stuff. <laughs> That's cool. I think what so we're going to have to do, Justin, at some point, uh, you know, once the Kickstarter is finished, once you've you, you've done the, you know, all, uh, the, the the ideas that you've got going on with initiative tracking and the dice and stuff, we need to run a proper, uh, not uh, if if you've got the time, we'll do a proper campaign, but we need to do a proper. You know, we've been messing around this evening. But yeah. just to play it, but it'd be really nice to do like a proper one shot, like a two parter where we can do, you know, spend some, spend some proper time playing mm. as players and doing this. I think that'd be yeah. really nice. Yeah, that'd be good. I'm happy to do that. Go and get sort of you two and maybe two of mine, my team as well. Yeah. Go on a proper adventure. Maybe, yeah. maybe even level two or level three adventurers. Oh, oh push the boat out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> At, at least, what do we need? Uh, it's at least level five or six. Don't we? Get, you know, get some feats in there, get some spells in there. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, we can. I can throw something, some big stuff at you. Yeah, it is nice. It is. It is so. Um, you know, I have. I'm. I'm. Yeah, you know, I'm. The only thing I'm comparing it to is D and D Beyond because that is the only online system I've played. I played. Um, what was the Pathfinder Steve? Something Labs. Oh hero yeah, labs. hero labs, hero labs, yeah. and that's 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 a not you know sorry hero labs that's a nightmare. Um, D and D Beyond did something right, but they basically copied the character sheet. And this having the it, I mean uh, you can't see my screen. I'll share my screen again because I want to keep talking about it. Where you got a really nice balance. Here's my stats and abilities. Here's my here's my skills. Um, over here, here's my immediate actions. Here's my combat stats, and I can switch. Here's my so this bit always stays there. The bit that is me, yeah. stays there, and I can I can see more detail about me. So here's everything to do with an elf. I'm also a ranger. I can look at my level up table there. I can just quickly whoop, and it and it comes up. Everything I need in one handy place. Yeah, and as you say, there's there's my uh, my traits straight back into combat. It's health is down the bottom, conditions are there, my picture's there. Everything I need is 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 on that one screen in a nice, yeah. well balanced way. I really like it. I'm really looking forward to actually playing it properly because um, I'm also a backer. Um, Steve, I think you also backed. I am. Um, yep. So once that's all wrapped up, yeah, it would be nice to actually take some time. And just dig it, dig a little deeper, see what's involved, um, and use it properly. I'm really looking and forward it, to it. It's, it's usable as a player within within about ninety seconds worth of showing you what buttons do. Yeah, I mean yeah. That, that's just a typical familiarity. You get anything. You get a new remote control for your new TV you just bought. You're like, what? What's yeah. the, what's the Disney button do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do I need an Amazon button? Um, but you know, Netflix button. But you end up using them. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like you know, you click everything once, and you kind of yeah, 
Absolutely, it does. I mean, like, for instance, if you click on your foot speed, for instance, up the top right, it always shows your foot speed, but if you go into that and it gives you your swim speed and your any other speeds that you've got going there. That's good. That's awesome. So it just gives you know you, you can drill down to things without clogging up your you know your 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 main screen because you always want to know how fast you go. You're not necessarily want to know how fast you climb or how fast you can swim or yeah. burrow or whatever else you want to do, fly. Um, but everything's kind of there if you it, everything you need to see is there all the time. Anything that you want to know sort of every now and again. It's just kind of one tap away. Mm. It's kind of how how we wanted it to be, just to make you know. Yep. Yeah, that just minimizes and maximizes it. Yeah. It's a lovely system. It really, really is. I'm looking forward to um, to getting used to to playing something with it. That is cool. Thank you very much, Justin, for Pleasure. joining us cool. again. Like I said, we'll, we'll definitely have something. We'll let you uh, once the Kickstarter's finished and wrapped up. We'll let you uh, rest up. But we'll uh, I don't know if you can do something before Christmas. It's it's late August at the moment as we're. Yeah. Well, the, the the main release date for UGM is November, I believe. Okay. Um, so, whether we'll kick, I mean, the, as I said to you at the beginning, our Kickstarter was a bit of a disaster. You know, Backer Kit and the other Backer Camp said, "Oh, we can't really help you because the categories that you want to go in are full." I'm like, oh, great, wonderful. So virgin kickstarters we are yep. but it doesn't matter because like i said the product's already there it's already ready um we were releasing in november anyway so yeah i not really reach anything yeah there's an element of um yeah first time first time kickstarters okay so it hasn't worked out as you planned mm. but consider it um marketing look at all the people who you've met through doing this the, the various videos various interviews the podcasts um, look at the people who have, uh, like we talked about it before going live, who have signed up but are not, they're the kind of people who are not going to use Kickstarter, but yeah. like the software, uh, are willing to pay. It is a subscription-based software, but you, you pay as much as you want. So, yeah. it's, you know, if you don't like it, don't pay for it, don't use it. But yeah. there's continual development there, continual growth. I well, love the amount of stuff that's, that's there already. That's because we, we we have had the question of why why are you doing a, a subscription base? Well, it's not it's not like you create a game, you put it out there, you move on to the next game. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. You know, with with UGM, the development is constant. We're constantly adding new sound sets. We're constantly adding new themes, new game sets, um, new campaigns. So you know, you'll get new campaigns that that you can play one shots that will completely set up ready to go, ready to click a button, add your characters in and off you go. You know, that's all, all takes time and development. And that's what, you know, that's what the subscription side is paying for. Yeah. Um, as well as server costs, obviously, you know, our, our game tonight was running on a, on a, on an Amazon server. Um, and the reason we use an Amazon server, they cost more, but they don't go down, yeah. you know, and it's, it's, that's the kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Well, I showed you the book of of what we've got coming soon. I mean, some of the stuff that we're looking at this side of Christmas is really exciting. I mean, the majority of the stuff I spoke about t tonight is going to be in the release anyway. So you'll have all the new, um, all the new spectator tools and uh, other bits and pieces and the dice and all that stuff. That'll all be yeah. there in, in in the release version. In fact, the dice, hopefully, my, my, my team keep going on at me. Is it in there, this version? Because I, I give them a new version every week. I'm like, it's not quite ready. Yeah. And they, they say, is it ready now? No, it's not. I'm sorry. Or they download it and go, oh, it's not there. <laughs> but hopefully that will be there within the next week. I'm, I'm trying to get that out for this weekend for our game. Um, but that's lovely. Andy's done some gorgeous uh, dice models for that, cool. um, which is really good. 
So yeah, it's uh, exciting stuff. Cool. And uh, with that, that will bring us to the end of our, I think this is our fourth Q&A uh, with, uh, with Justin from Games Master. But yes, I think definitely we'll, we'll arrange something. Um, two of yours, two of mine, UGM, uh, literally you, GM, um, yeah. and uh, and we'll put something in the books. We'll get something in. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and looking for as we said, we're looking for. We're definitely going to be using this. We we'll definitely end up running our own game with this, and see if we can kind of capture people's uh, people's enjoyment of it on various cameras, and we also use it around the table as well. There's a lot of stuff that, that that's there and, and built in. Um, really, really looking forward to it. So. Thank you again, Justin. We will leave it there. Pleasure. Yeah. We'll... Thank you very much. Uh, we. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's cool. Right. So, everybody, we will leave it there and we will see you again next time. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Cool. Cheers then. Bye bye.